So let's lighten up our uh, collars. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is take a paper towel. Okay, just like this. i got a big old roll here. Wipe out my brush. Take up some medium. And I think just the color that I have in my brush will be sufficient for this. Okay. Get lots and lots of medium. Now let's come up here and just see how light this is. Well, not... Pretty good, pretty good. So this is going to be our light. So I'm going ahead. See that? Long, long strokes. Get lots and lots of medium. And reload frequently. Okay. See that? Now I'm not going to worry about overlapping the fur. Because at this point that would be silly. Because we've got a lot of color to add first we've got the background to put in so don't get carried away with trying to do too much in this underpainting you just want to find the darks and lights and you want to start to form the different shapes here we go see this a little bit of a shadow in there so i'm going to make it a little bit darker than this color all right here's another one we want to make this a little bit darker okay and right in here in fact I think we want to make it even darker than we are so let me get a little bit more that's how easy it is to make it dark see there we go that's what I want if we think it's too dark we can always just grab a q-tip like this see and come in here See, you can almost take it all off, but I don't want to do that. I just want to lighten it. All righty. So now my little kitty is really holding through. All right. Finish with our white. And then we'll come in and put in some of the detail. And what I mean by that is where shadows are. Okay. And, whoops, need more medium when you see that. That's exactly what that means. All right. Here we go. Go, 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 go. Now, let's go back to our photo. All righty. Where we see is on the right-hand side of the neck. So, see this? I'm just grabbing a little bit of this... Uh, darker color mixing it in with my lighter now let's test by coming up here and seeing this all right that's darker I like that all right and that comes way down here now our our feet on the cats are darker too all right this one is really really coming straight down and these are going to the side Stroke in the direction that you see the fur shaping. Okay, and in all of these, I see this. All right, see that? And then this is like a, a cascade, if you will. All right, straight across. And then cascading forward. Just like that. Straight across. And then cascading forward. We picked up some color underneath, but that's okay. All right, next bit of shadow is right up here. Just a little bit, not much. Okay, a little bit down here, but not much. This will allow us to see our lights when we actually put them in. This is pretty bright, except that I want a little darker color right here yeah part of the shadow now this is going to be the brightest spot in the fur in the whole painting so we'll just keep that let's stand back and see what we've got okay let's put together the background on fancy she's coming along she's a pretty fancy cat that sits still for us like this and you know something i really want to have the focus on the portrait so i'm going to do what's called a neutral background now a neutral background is like a, a light gray or a beige or 
uh, some very light background in which uh, there's no attention diverted from the subject matter to the background. So let's go over to the palette and see what we need to do. Okay, for a neutral background, I like to take a little bit of the medium, come right in here. I'm using a number 10 filbert to get started with. I may either just finish with this one or move. When I do pets, a lot of times, especially cats, I'm using a 10 by 14 canvas, and, and this brush will do a great and mighty work with it. Okay, let's go ahead, get some more of the Payne's Gray. We're going to need quite a bit of it. Now, I have some white gesso right here, okay? So I'm just going to grab a bunch of it and see how this is now moving into a beautiful gray color. It should. It's paints gray. It's just getting lighter and lighter. So I'll go ahead and get some more, all right? Again, I want a neutral color. That's one that's not going to demand attention. Okay, another trick here. See, I had a very big pile. And I put some white. It would take a lot of white to whiten and lighten all of this. But if you only do half of it, it's amazing. All right? Amazing how quickly you could get that to go light. Now, I always like to put another color into my background. So that's why I've got some blue up there. So I'll just go ahead, take a little bit of blue. See that? Ooh, see how nice that is? Now, there's blue already, and it's this very blue, ultramarine. All right, there we go. All righty. Now, yeah, I just want a blue tint. Nothing else, just a blue tint for my gray. Okay, now the gesso has helped to act like a medium as well as white, but let's take a little bit of this slow-drying medium. All right, there we are. Let's come up to the canvas. Now, because I have a filbert, what I can do is start right in here, see? And go right around with very little problem. And again, you don't have to worry if you don't get right to the edge of the cat, okay? There we go. All right. So, let's just, I'll just go ahead while I'm here and put this in see how easy that background is to cover boy if you get these nice big filberts this is a number 10 and you're doing a lot of cats this is really going to work wonders for you all right let's reload again this is with that blue gray and i'll go right in here now right around i don't necessarily try to get up next to the cat I do to some extent, but I don't worry if I go over it. Some are, are skip. See, here I got a little bit over, and right here I'm a little bit under. It's okay. At this step, it's just like hand grenades and horseshoes. Close is okay. There we are, right around the corner. I am going to get a little bit closer. See how easy that is to get right around there? All right, now this canvas is pretty dry, so uh, I like to keep the brush loaded. Okay. Here we are, coming right around. Let's see how the easy, oh, look at that. And we'll go right on down. Oh, that does such a nice job. Okay, what I'll do now is get a little more of the uh, paint and we'll paint the bottom half of this. All right. Grab some more medium. Go right into this color. See how well this color is working? All right, I like that. All right, let's come back. And we'll continue right down our cat. There we go. It just does such a great job. It works a lot better than the flats do for going around objects like that. 
and we'll just fill this in. Now this is not going to be my only uh, time painting the background. I want to put some interest into it, okay, but not much. I want to keep, you'll sometimes find that if you do a commission painting, people will ask you to match the walls of their house. And they'll put, or they ha they want you to match the frame. So you get them to give you a sample of what they mean. Because if you try to guess it, it won't work. In my 20-some years or 30-some years of painting, it's only worked once. And that was just recently, and it was kind of a fluke. I did a uh, neutral color of a painting for a dog. It was a 24 by 36 inch full-bodied portrait. And... Uh, uh, you could not tell the difference between the neutral background and the uh, walls at uh, where she decided to hang the uh, cat. So that was kind of cool. You don't always get breaks like that. But when you do, enjoy them. All right, there we go. Now this cat's hair is really, they're long hair. And Fancy's hair is just really go way out into the background. So... You can safely get close. My dad was a re retired military man. He always used to have that phrase. Close. Or shoes and hand grenades. My daughter was an MP too. And when she went to go to work for uh, a security firm that investigated uh, robberies in process, he told her, your job is going to be to go in first. But no hand grenades, okay? you got to flush out the bad guy, but you can't use the hand grenades. That's the difference between an MP and a police officer, I guess. Okay. So I guess that one comes in in martial laws. I don't know if they can use, uh, if, if you have martial law and a civilian, whether they can use hand grenades or not. Those of you who know might let me know. Okay, let's stand back and see what we've got. Well, we're doing pretty good. We've got a nice gray, but let's just add a couple of interesting uh, lighter spots. Not prominent, just a little bit. We're going to use this uh, uh, white gesso I have here, and I'll show you how we make it. Uh, and we just want this to be very, very light, okay? Don't want it to be taking over much of the cat's attention or much attention away from the cat see there we go and i don't really think we should skip any part of the background so we'll just go ahead and don't do just one stroke do several see i'm not even trying to plan these strokes so just take a little bit more all right there we go It's just made to be quite neutral. Now, it's the um, best thing to do at this point is simply take a fan brush and use it as a blender. See this? What I like about acrylics is that as it tacks up and starts to dry, you can really blend easy, okay? And even, I'm not using a very, very soft brush. I'm using a rather stiff one and uh but a light light touch okay see that see how the neutral color is just uh being worked in with the white and it and when we do that it's picking up a lot of the under color and it's complementing see that all right so we'll add more to the background later and uh you can see how it looks Okay, now you can also, if you want, at this point in time, take a blender brush and go over it. But I don't think we need to. I think it's looking pretty good. All right, there we are. So, why don't we go see how we add color to Little Fancy.